Welcome to part two of the history of the Black Disciples, the 1970s. I would like to give hell and high honors to King Day, King Hoover, King Shorty, Lenny Longstreet, Marvell, Scan, um, and a couple others, um, Godfather. And um, I would like to give hell and high honors to them brothers because they was effective leaders. And we all know as leaders, we have to make decisions that a lot of people won't go with. But our decisions be made for the peoples and because of the peoples. In the early 1970s, government investigations into street gangs misusing government funds led to charges against high-ranking members of the Black P-Stones, resulting in Jeff Fort's imprisonment in 1972. The investigations continued with the vice lords and the black gangster disciples. While authorities were able to obtain testimony from members of the Stones and vice lords, a key witness for the disciples, Mingo, was severely beaten by fellow gang members for snitching on his own kind, but no charges were brought against the disciples. Both the Stones and disciples were technically mismanaging funds, but only the Stones were convicted leading to speculation that the government was more focused on targeting the Stones. The disciples did not actively seek out the government funds, which were given to them as an equal payment to not favor the Stones. The disciples also kept a low profile, avoiding the media and the spotlight, which may have helped them avoid further scrutiny. King Day name was being disrespected. People was walking on his name. I mean, had members scared. The leaders that was here with King David at that time had dropped the ball, you see. So like I say, brothers like me, White Crown, Mickey Bull, Candy, and others, you know, we got in 1974, you did, we was in State Bill, you see, and Hoover was finna get hit because they were saying that Hoover was saying that King David said that if he um, ever died, Hoover would be the king, which is a lie. We know that because King Dave always said, only a king can run a king. Hoover never said that. They were trying to just hit Hoover and get Hoover out the way. They was, they was trying to whack him. Okay. You did, and I stopped it. You see, so Hoover said, no, no, I don't mess around no more. I said, hey man, I said, these guys say you they king. He said, no, I left it alone. I said, man, is this y'all king? They said, yeah, now mind me, I done went against the disciples. You see, real disciples that have been in jail for a long time about him. So anyway, you dig what I'm saying? It didn't go down. So Hoover got his crown back in 1974 in D-House. The disciple nation began to experience internal strife and disorganization with various groups within the organization refusing to follow the leadership of Larry Hoover and even feuding with each other. Some members sought to overthrow Hoover, while others harbored resentment towards the gangsters due to past conflicts. Additionally, some groups within the Disciples were motivated by self-interest and rebelled against the organization's leadership. In 1973, the Disciple Nation faced a severe conviction following the murder of William Puki Young. Hoover, the leader of the Disciples, ordered Ying's death as he had stolen drugs and money from the gang. Andrew Howard carried out the murder on Hoover's behalf in an alley in the Inglewood neighborhood, shooting Young six times in the head. Hoover and Howard were both arrested and charged with the murder on March 16th. Later that year, on November 5th, they were sentenced to 150 to 200 years in prison at the Statesville Correctional Facility in Crest Hill, Illinois. The conviction marked a significant blow to the gangster disciples and their leadership. After David Barksdale's death, the gangster disciples began to fall into further disarray. The loss of their charismatic leader was a significant blow to the organization, and without his guidance, the group began to splinter into smaller factions each with their own leaders and agendas. One such faction was led by Larry Hoover, who had become the de facto leader of the organization while serving his sentence at Statesville Correctional Facility. From his prison cell, 
Hoover continued to exert his influence over the gangster disciples, consolidating power and expanding the group's criminal activities. Under Hoover's leadership, the gangster disciples became even more violent and ruthless, engaging in drug trafficking, extortion, and murder on a large scale. The group also expanded its reach beyond Chicago, establishing a significant presence in other cities across the United States, including Atlanta, Indianapolis, and Memphis. Despite their criminal activities, however, the gangster disciples continued to be seen by many as a positive force in their communities, particularly in the areas of education and social services. The group established a number of programs designed to help young people stay out of trouble and succeed in school, including after-school tutoring, mentorship programs, and college scholarships. Today, the Gangster Disciples remain one of the largest and most powerful street gangs in the United States, with an estimated 50,000 members spread across dozens of states. Despite ongoing efforts by law enforcement to dismantle the group, the Gangster Disciples continue to operate and exert influence in many urban communities, perpetuating a legacy of violence and criminal activity that began more than half a century ago. Despite his intimidating presence, King David was also known for his philanthropy and community involvement. He was a strong believer in education and often donated money and resources to schools in underprivileged neighborhoods. In addition to throwing money at Bryn Mawr School, he also gave out scholarships to promising students. King David also believed in providing for the community through social programs. He set up a disciple city hall which acted as a community center and provided food, clothing, and other resources to those in need. This center also provided a safe space for children to hang out and play, away from the dangers of the streets. Overall, King David's legacy is one of a complex and multifaceted leader. While he did have a tough exterior and was involved in gang activity, he also had a deep commitment to his community and worked to improve the lives of those around him. After Barksdale's death, the Disciple Nation was thrown into disarray as different groups vied for power and influence. Some gangster gangs allied with the Disciples were devastated by Barksdale's passing and wanted to continue building closer ties with the Disciple Nation. However, a rumor spread that Larry Hoover believed he was entitled to be the king of the Disciples Nation, which caused some groups of Disciple Nations to turn against each other. Some wanted to kill Hoover, while others supported him, leading to violence among the Disciples and gangsters. Meanwhile, the main disciples and gangsters had to work together to stop the rumors from causing further damage. However, there were still some disciples who held grudges against the gangsters and saw Barksdale's passing as an opportunity to make moves against them. This led to further chaos and infighting within the disciple nation. In the Robert Taylor homes, Mickey Bull rose in rank as a top vanguard and continued to oversee the buildings between 49th and 51st streets including the five white buildings at 51st and State and the red buildings on 49th. However, in 1973, Bull was imprisoned on manslaughter charges and was released in 1975. By the summer of 1976, he had regained enough power to order deeds to be done. One day in July 1976, Todd White stopped near the 4,844 Estate Street building in Robert Taylor Homes. Bull and Thad Asterol saw White, who was not known in the area and was dressed in fancy clothes, and drove an ice car. They saw an opportunity to rob him. Bull approached White while Terrell held a pistol to his temple and demanded all his money. White claimed he had none, and after a search, Bull found nothing. Infuriated, Bull grabbed White by his necktie and dragged him across the street. White made a wise crack. I told you I didn't have any money, then twisted away and began to run. Bull, enraged by White's physical resistance and wise crack, ordered Terrell to shoot him. Terrell fired a shot through White's chest, and Bull told him to shoot again, make sure he's dead. As a result, both Terrell and Johnson were charged with murder. Bull, who was still on parole for the 1973 manslaughter, 
received only five years for the murder and was back in Robert Taylor Holmes by 1977. In 1976, the Disciples Nation were in a state of chaos, but Dondrick Acklin was able to take control and write a constitution and bylaws for the Black Disciples. This helped Larry Hoover regain control of the gangsters, bringing peace to the organization. However, this was not the true birth of the Black Disciples street gang as Acklin and others were really just regaining control. Despite the temporary peace, a civil war soon broke out between the Black Disciples and gangsters. Some gangsters believed that the Black Disciples' restructuring was a break away from the Disciple Nation. In the prison system, the GDs and BDs were at each other's throats with no resolution, leading to chaos throughout the organization. In the late 1970s, Mickey Bull was once again incarcerated. However, before he went to prison, he managed to persuade several members of the Mickey Cobras from a Robert Taylor building located at 49th and State Street to become Black Disciples. These particular Mickey Cobras became known as the Fidel Castro Mickey Cobras. The building that was taken over by the Black Disciples was the 4,844 building. In April of 1978, Larry Hoover demonstrated his power in Statesville prison by organizing a work stoppage strike against the poor quality of food being served to inmates. During the strike, Hoover collaborated with leaders from various rival and allied organizations, including the Gangster Disciples, Black Disciples, Black Souls, Vice Lords, El Rukins, Black P-Stones, and Mickey Cobras. This work stoppage led to the formation of the Folk and People Alliances in April of 1978, with the aim of controlling gang wars in the prison system. Hoover proposed the creation of two rival coalitions that would be followed by all major gangs, which could be controlled by negotiations between the leaders of each of these coalitions, similar to how the Italian Mafia organizes their gang wars between families. For his own organization and allies, Hoover assembled the Folk Alliance, which united Gangster Disciples, Black Disciples, Ashland Vikings, and Bros, 2-6, Satan Disciples, Maniac Latin Disciples, Spanish Cobras, Imperial Gangsters, Latin Eagles, Simon City Royals, and Insane Popes to work together in peace. The opposition agreed to this and they formed their own coalition called the People Alliance, which included the El Rukins, Vice Lords, and Latin Kings, as well as the Latin Counts, Bishops, Mickey Cobras, Four Corner Hustlers, Insane Unknowns, Spanish Lords, and Puerto Rican Stones. This coalition proved to be highly effective in reducing violence between gangsters and, and helped to maintain the Disciple Nation.